Okay, friends, let's get into sheets and actually do work similar to what I did on the board in the last video. I was kind of alluding to it, actually. So we're going to get in here and uh, and we're going to take a look at this cost function. So 5,000 plus N times 250. So uh, we're going to, let's go into sheets. So the way to get into sheets, if you need to make a sheet from scratch, up till now, I've been supplying you with links. So now we're actually going to start by creating our own. So what's so nice about Sheets is you just go Sheets in Google, and then you get the first link up there, Google Sheets, free online spreadsheets for personal use. I'm gonna hit the Google, Google Sheets, and then hit blank. Now at this point, I am actually in one of my accounts. Um, you don't have to be though. So I'm just gonna hit this, and it pops open an untitled spreadsheet. So this is awesome. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to title it, actually. I'm going to call this uh, Total Cost Analysis or something like that. Okay, so what I want to be able to do in here is I want to be able to put a number of months in, kind of like we were doing before. So I'm going to make a column right here. It doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to say... <coughs> number of months and because i'm me i'm going to make that bold and underline it and then it bothers me when it goes past the line so i'm going to double click on that right there and make it move over and because i'm also me i'm going to center everything these are little things i always do when i Number of months, I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go up one, two, and so forth and so on and so forth and so on. I want to show you something cool that Sheets can do. So if you start something like this, and I want to keep this going, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll go up to I don't know, 10 or 20 or something. If you have a pattern like that and you want to keep it going, what you can do is actually select that, those three things, zero, one, two then pull this little guy down and what it'll do is it'll continue that pattern as far as you want it to until you let go. So I can go out, let's go out three years. There, or excuse me, two years, <laughs> 24 months. And you can go out three years, four years, however far you want, which is kind of nice. It's a nice little feature of uh, spreadsheets. Excel does it too, but definitely Sheets does it. Now what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna put the total cost of the car. And again, I'm going to make it bold and underlined, and I'm going to double click there to make it wider. Okay, and here comes the fun part. We're going to put our formula into this top cell here. The formula we're going to use is the same one that's on your notes right here. 5,000 plus N times 250. First thing you want to realize is, if you're going to use a formula in sheets, you got to type an equal sign first, which is awesome. So you're going to hit equals. Now you're going to type 5,000. Don't worry about the dollar sign. We'll get to that in a second too. You can, we can change that after the fact. Then you're going to hit plus. Now the formula says we have to do the number of months times 250. The number of months in sheets cannot be written as a variable. It must be written as a cell. So what you're going to do is you're going to wander over here, click on that zero. Then you're going to hit times, and then you're going to type 250, and you're going to press enter. So what you just did was you entered this formula right here, which is exactly the same formula as the one back here, but it's in spreadsheet form. Instead of N, you have the cell C5. Now, if you want to change this to dollars, you can just click up here and hit the dollar sign. That'll make it money. And then the rad part is, you can double click on that little square right there instead of dragging and it'll fill it all the way down till you don't go any further. So you might remember this number. After two years earlier, we figured out it was $11,000 uh, in total cost. So there you go, my friends. That is your T table. And that's a way to enter a really nice linear formula uh, into your T table. Pretty rad. 
go back and look what comes next. Uh, how is the cost changing from month to month? Write a sentence to explain. All right, let's look. I want to change it to total cost. Make sure it's not, make sure it's not unclear at all. How's the total cost changing from month to month? Okay, so it looks like from when we purchase it for the first month, it goes up to fifty. Next month, month up to ah, uh, it's up to fifty each month. Every month, we add an additional two hundred and fifty, which makes perfect sense because every month we have to pay for that gas which is $250 a month. So that makes perfect sense. And I said, the number you just discovered has many names depending on context. Next thing up, we're gonna create what's called a scatter plot of these data. So what's great about having sheets is you're already set up for the scatter plot right here. So all you're gonna do is you're going to select everything that you want to plot. So you've selected everything. You're now gonna go up to insert. You're going to go to chart and you're going to wander over here. That's a line chart, which is fine, except I want a scatter plot. We have to scroll down till we see it. scatter plot. Here we go. You're going to click that. And there it is, my friends. I want to go ahead and close this up so we can focus just on this. Now, scatter plots, remember what you're looking at. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. There we go. Each point, we spoke about this uh, back in the making and interpreting graphs. Each point is actually two different um, pieces of data. It's an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So this point right here is, it's saying the total cost of the car is $5,000, but that's for zero months. This point right here, total cost of the car is $5,250, that's for one month. $5,500, that's for two months. 5000 I just noticed something. It's actually giving you the number of months up there above that little square. That's kind of cute. I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know Sheets did that. Kind of cool. Four months, total cost of the car, 6000 And so forth, and so on, and so forth, and so on. And that is pretty much what the scatter plot is going to look like. So let's go back and look. I got one more question I think we want to look at. Would it make sense to connect those dots in a straight line or with a straight line? Why or why not? Okay, so before we answer the question, I'm going to actually do it. I'm going to double click on the chart and then come over here to customize. And when you're in customize, there's all kinds of things you can, like we say, customize. You can, you can, anyway, I'm gonna let you click through this when you have time. But one of the more important ones is down here under series. Now, a lot of this, you can pick like, for example, the colors that you're using and things like that. But one that we're gonna get into a little bit now and more as we go is this thing called a trend line. And if you click on that, it's going to add the line between all the dots as we go, which is fabulous. Now, the question is, should it be there? Should it be there? Well, let's focus on what the line is actually showing you. It's showing you a smooth transition from point to point. If you remember, we chatted about this back in making and interpreting graphs. I think it was with the Ben Snowfall data. And back then, we agreed that it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, except it makes it easier to read the graph. Here, I think we could argue that it does make sense because you don't jump. It's not like you pay $250 at the beginning of every month and then you never pay anything else for the rest of the month in gas. You pay the gas costs gradually through the month. So I think you could argue, like, for example, here, from the month you buy the car to the next month, you are smoothly adding gas to the car, especially if you're driving the car similarly through those months. So I think you could argue that leaving the line in there would be an okay thing. So in this case. All right, let's do some more.